Hello, and welcome to another day of printmaking. My name is Janie, and today I am going to be showing you start to finish how I ink and print my Apollo and Hyacinthus piece. Now, this piece is four blocks, and each of the blocks are 12 inches by 18 inches, so it's a lot bigger than what I normally work in, and it took a lot longer to carve, obviously, and it took a little bit of time to figure out how I was going to print this piece. This isn't the first time I've printed something this large. My Achilles and Patroclus piece is the same amount of blocks and the same size, and then so is my Hades and Persephone piece, so those are the three largest I've ever printed. Now, the one with the most ink is Achilles and Patroclus. I ended up having, I believe, seven different colors on those four blocks. And the Hades and Persephone, it's similar. It's about six different colors around the four blocks. Now, this one, I made things a little simpler on myself, and I only have five main colors to mix, and that's what you see me doing here with the inks. I am simply taking the old ink out, the ones that I mixed last night for my test prints, and I am just making sure that I'm saving the ink, that I'm thinning it out a little bit, because some of them are a little bit too thick, because the ink is a little bit old. <laughs> and I'm just making sure that it is as mixed as possible, there's enough of it to get this run of 10 prints out, so I can start. Now one thing you'll see me adding throughout this process is something called a transparent base. This isn't a color, it goes on looking a little bit white, but it doesn't actually change the color of my ink. It just kind of makes sure that there's more of it, if that makes sense. So I'm getting all the pigment down with my regular inks and then I'm adding my transparent base to make sure that I have a nice amount of ink. When I roll it onto the rollers, that's called loading your roller. So you're going to see me doing that several times throughout this process as well. And usually I take out the sound of me working, but even sped up, I really love the sound of loading ink onto a roller. So I left it in this time. I hope you like it as much as I do. Now I ended up mixing this ink the night before I printed. And so after wrapping it in um, wax paper and making sure that it was saved so I could use it again and I'm not wasting ink. It's a little bit thick and so you're gonna see me going back and I'm adding in burnt plate oil. You could also use linseed oil for this process and I'm just making sure that's nice and mixed in and that just loosens it up a little bit and it makes it easier to use. I'm also making sure that the ink isn't super thick on my roller and how I do that is I just take a little paint knife, uh, palette knife, and I scrape up the excess and I add it back to the mix and I just roll my roller over it again. Um, it unloads some of that ink and it makes sure it's the right consistency. You don't want it to peak up like little like peaks. You don't want it to look like Velcro. You want it to be pretty smooth. That being said, because I print at home, I tend to load a little bit more ink on than tri like traditional printmakers would. Um, and today I'm using for the very first time a cold roll laminator. So we're going to see how that process works and how I have to adjust my usual printmaking techniques. Another thing you might notice you might be wondering about is the fact that there are holes cut out of all of my blocks. And this is for a very good reason, and it's that I couldn't get the open areas of the block that I didn't want carved. I couldn't get those completely clean. Every time I would ink them, ink would inevitably transfer onto those parts and then would just get into the actual image and kind of muddy things up a little bit. So I cut out the high, like the areas with high traffic, I'm gonna call it, lots of chatter, um, especially around both of their faces and on the whites of their shirts, just to make sure that it's, you know, as clean as possible. Now, normally, I really don't mind having a little bit of chatter and a little bit of noise. I think it helps with movement and it makes the image a little bit more visually interesting, but I would like to control where that goes <laughs> just a little bit, so I cut out the holes. Now, later on, I actually cut out way more pieces. Um, 
just because you'll see at the end of this lots of noise still occurred on their shirts. Um, I cleaned these with oils at the end and so a lot of oil got into the first print. Um, I just wanted to make sure that they were as clean as possible. And like I said before, I am using a cold roll laminator today. Now I've seen lots of other printmakers use these instead of traditional presses. There are a couple of perks to getting a cold roll laminator. One of the main ones is that it's not as expensive as a actual press. Those can run you hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Those are also really, really large usually, so you have to have a pretty big studio space in order to have them. And I work out of my home. <laughs> and I don't have a lot of money, so this really did kind of help me out. Um, I put it right on my table, it folds up and down, and I can store it in different places if I have to, so I'm, I'm a big fan so far. Now, in the past, I have always hand printed my prints, and the big ones, such as this one or Hades and Persephone, will usually take me about 30 minutes to get one print out and that's not even counting that has a lot of misprints and so those aren't even all usable and so I used to get very frustrated when I was printing the Hades and Persephone one in particular took me six hours to make 12 prints and about four of those were misprints and so I was really really frustrated which is why I finally caved and decided to test out the cold roll laminator now this laminator helped me so much with these Apollo and Hyacinthus ones. I maybe did 12 in four hours, and that's a huge improvement on what I usually do, so I can't recommend it enough for printmakers. Since this is the first time that I'm using this, I was still working out the pressure that I needed the rolls to be down, so I ended up having to go over with my wooden spoon and kind of work out uh, the details around both of their faces. After a little while though of printing, I got the hang of it and I didn't have to use that wooden spoon anymore, so big fan. And there you have it, a print that isn't perfect this round, but I eventually cut out the areas where the ink transferred and I got a pretty great print that I'm proud of. I hope you all liked this video. Please like and subscribe and comment on this video. If I get to a thousand subscribers, then I can start doing live story times and carvings here on YouTube. I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time. Bye!